Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today we are doing another q and I say another because I feel like I've just done one, but I did one a few weeks ago. But that Q&A was more about how to get a job on a cruise ship, but there was also a lot of questions amongst the ones that you asked about that that were kind of directed at me and my experience on cruise ships and what my plans are and all of that stuff. I'm gonna answer all of those questions today. Um, I know it seems a bit self-absorbed, but you guys seem to wanna know. So if you wanna know, stay tuned, and if you don't wanna know, I'll see you in the next video. All right, so the first question. Do you ever get time on board to just relax by yourself, or do you always spend time with other people? I spend a lot of time by myself so as you guys know i work in the shops we get a lot of time off because the shops can't be open when the ship is in port which means i get most port days off and i just work in the evening now on my previous ships when i wasn't doing youtube i would mainly go out with the people that i worked with and some friends that i'd made outside of my department but now I'm doing YouTube and I'm posting two videos a week and there's you know I'm answering all your questions on Instagram and da 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 there is a lot to do so basically port days are YouTube dead or are dedicated to YouTube now if I'm like oh my god I don't have any YouTube stuff to do this is wonderful then I uh, mm, I will spend time on my own, but to be honest, I am a people person. I, I love being around people. If I'm going out in port, it is nice to do things with other people. However, there are, I guess, I am not being succinct at all. I would say it's half and half. Sometimes I like to just get off and have a drink with people or with one person. And other times I'm like, I am really happy to just go out by myself. I would say I'm more of a like one-to-one. -one. Like I prefer to go out with either one other person or small groups of people just because you know what it's like when you go out with 10 people. They want to go in this shop, they want to go in this shop, you want to go in this shop or this restaurant or you know, fill in the blank. The only times I'll really go out in big groups is if there's already a plan. We're going here, we're going here, and then we're going here. Because then there's none of that, well, I wanna do this and I wanna do this. I, I cannot stand that. Whereas, you know, if you're going out with one other person or there's three or four of you, it's very easy to just be like, cause someone usually takes control and you go where you go. My favorite place on my last contract, okay. Uh, my last contract was on The Valiant Lady, we were doing the med. Well, for the first bit, I suppose, we were doing England and, like, Belgium and Germany and stuff, and then we went over to the med. And it was a three-week rotation. I've already forgotten what it was. It was, like, one week French ports, one week Italian ports, one week Spanish ports. Spanish ports were definitely my favourite. Spain is one of my favourite countries in the whole world. And... Ibiza and Mallorca were my favourite, hands down. We were in Ibiza every Friday, which I was, oh, just, it was just wonderful. So Ibiza is definitely up there, but Mallorca, which is an island just off Spain by Ibiza, was um, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So I'd, I'd say Mallorca was my favourite. We only went there a few times, but when we did go there, I made the most of it because it was it was just wonderful. Love your videos, thank you. Do you ever get burnt out having to work every single day and how do you cope with it? Yeah, but only towards the end of my contract. Like everyone, I think when you start a new job or when you first get on board a ship, you're so excited and you're like raring to go. And also because everyone works every day, that becomes normal. It would be different if like every other department had a weekend and the shops didn't. But ev everyone works every day, so it's just it's just what you do. But yeah, like at the at the end of your contract, when you're like six, seven months in, you do burn out. It's like I am ready to go home now and not speak to a single person. Because obviously, when you're working on a cruise ship, if you're not speaking to passengers, you're speaking to crew members, you're speaking to your roommate, your boss, yeah, you know whoever. So. I, I find that at the end of my contract, I get quieter and quieter and quieter because I'm like, I just don't want to speak. I just do not want to speak to anybody. You do burn out, but I really wouldn't worry about that at the start of your contract. And even at the end of your contract, like, it's not like you burn out to a point of, I'm going to die. The, I think the, the only time that I was like that was when I was finishing my first contract with Steiner, the onboard spa. 
because with training in London and then the first ship and the second ship because I got transferred in the middle of my contract it was 12 months you did hear that right so I did two and a half months training at London which was intense I went straight from there to Rhapsody of the Seas I did six months on there and then I went I got transferred to Legend of the Seas and I finished the year on Legend of the Seas and also I was working in the spa so I was working every single day you know the spa is a lot different to the shops you do not get the port day off because the spa can be open and can be you know people still book in for spa treatments on a port day so to work every single day for a year and also you if you're I was massaging so it's like it's a physical job and you're doing that for like I was gonna say 12 hours a day you would work 12 hours a day but I wasn't I was massaging for maybe eight hours a day girl yeah you best believe in my last month on board I was I was not myself people were like worried about me I was worried about me and I remember on my last day my manager oh, she was such a bitch but she thought she was being funny and she was like oh Lucy you've been extended I was like no but she, I mean, she wasn't saying it as a joke. Even though it was a joke, she was like, no, you, you're you not getting off today. And I was like, Liliana, if I'm not getting off the gangway, I'm going to jump off. <laughs> like, I'm getting off and I'm going home. Um, and she's like, oh, I'm just joking. You haven't really been extended. I was like, well, either way, I wasn't going to stay because I am dead. I, this has been a year of my life. So... Yeah, I wouldn't really worry about severe burnout unless you're going to be on board for a year, which I would not recommend. Would you ever consider quitting cruise ships in the future? I feel like I would do it until I die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm starting to think that I'll do it until I die. Um, and, it, it, you know, it's funny, me and my one of my really good friends, Shannon, we did our first contract together. And we always used to say, like, oh, my God, like, look at the, like, 60-year-olds. Can you believe, like, they're still they're still working on cruise ships at 60 because we were saying that we we're like yeah we're, I mean we're probably gonna do like one or two contracts and both of us eight years later are still working on cruise ships so whenever we speak we're like we're gonna be those 60 year olds that we were like laughing about and you know what we probably will be but no in in all honesty I will quit cruise ships at some point I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon because I'm still thoroughly enjoying it and I think it's going to be really really difficult to leave I know it's going to be really difficult to leave I mean how how could you leave a lifestyle where you live on a ship you have access to amazing restaurants you're meeting new people all the time you're going to new you're literally in a new destination every day how can you leave that lifestyle and not miss it so it's going to be interesting when I do decide to leave. I think it's going to be a very, very, very difficult transition. We'll just see what the future holds. I think like the future's a lot more, I mean, obviously the future's still uncertain as hell, but it's a lot more certain because I have this YouTube channel and you guys, and it's doing really well in terms of like growth and I'm earning a little bit of money from it now. It's still not enough money for me to like, be a full-time YouTuber but it's going in the right direction put it that way and I've always said like oh if I could earn like a few grand a month off cruising as crew I mean that's just, that's a salary isn't it so then this could be my full-time job and I don't really know how I will do this when I'm not on cruise ships but or maybe I won't maybe I'll give up cruise ships and give up YouTube um and do something else I have I don't know but yeah the plan is to leave cruise ships at some point in the distant future but I, ha I just have a feeling that I'm gonna push it back and push it back and push it back and I'll still be I'll be making this video when I'm 60 answering the same question are you ever gonna give up cruise ships or are you gonna work there until you die and I'll be 60 saying yeah you know what you're just gonna have to bury me at sea <laughs> How do you detox your mind after every contract? Thank you, Mauricio. Mauricio is a good friend of mine that asked that question. You know what it does? It takes a while, and I've, I've definitely made videos on this about when you come off a cruise ship uh, to home, there is a huge transition period. And it's actually been a little bit harder this time, I think, because my contract was so long. And last year, a lot of stuff 
in my life has changed so for the better but nevertheless it's changed so it's an adjustment and how do I detox my mind I just shut myself off from everything which I don't know whether it's the right thing to do but that's the only way I really know how to do it because as I said when you get to the end of your contract you're like I just don't want to speak to anybody so I come home and I usually tell my friends that I'm coming home like a week or two after I'm actually home and that's not because I don't want to see them I'm like desperate to see my friends but I also recognise that I need a week or two where I just have nothing to do and as soon as I tell my friends and family that I'm home they want to make plans and they want to do stuff and we want, you know we want to see each other which absolutely amazing and I'm not moaning about that I'm really not but I know that when I come back I just need time to decompress. Do you have a career plan for working in the industry and becoming a manager? No I don't. I spoke about this briefly in the video I made about sleeping with your colleagues, sleeping with your co-workers which I will link down below and I basically said you need to ask yourself is this a career or is this a, a job where you're just there to get a paycheck? Now Every cruise ship I've been on, I have been asked to step up as manager. <sighs> people are obviously like, what the hell are you doing? You've been working there for eight years and people want you to progress and you're just not. So with Steiner, I had a fantastic time with Steiner, the onboard spa, the onboard wellness spa, you know what I'm talking about. I had a wonderful time, uh, two wonderful contracts. However, you work like a dog for very little money and I don't really like the company ethics. So, especially with Steiner, I was like, I have no interest in progressing through the ranks with Steiner. I don't, don't want to work for them for very long. Then I moved over to Harding Retail. After working for Steiner, I got the job with Harding and I went on the P&O ships. And you know what? I was thinking about progressing through the ranks there, but not with Harding. I was like, uh, maybe I could be hotel general manager, which means that I would need to work in reception. So I was thinking about changing departments. In the end, I'd actually decided to move over to Future Cruises, where you sell uh, passengers that are on board their next cruise while they're still on their current one. So I was actually doing cross training for that. So in my port deck, because I wasn't doing YouTube then. YouTube wasn't even a thought. So in my port days, instead of, you know, going out in port and having a good time, I was like, no, I'm going to cross train for a different department. And then Virgin Voyages launched. Harding Retail got the contract with Virgin Voyages so that, you know, they were going to supply the shop staff to Virgin Voyages. But you had to apply. It wasn't a, a case of just being placed on there it's because Virgin Voyages wanted to have a say on who was going to go on their ships. And I applied because moving over to Future Cruises, I had spoken to a lot of people and they were like, look, it's going to take at least two contracts um, to get all the stuff you need to move over. So I was like, oh, OK, so this isn't going to be as quick as I would like it to be. Applied for Virgin Voyages, genuinely did not think I was going to get it because I don't know why I doubted myself, really. I, th I just thought... Surely so many people are going to apply for this. The chances of me actually getting it is really, really slim. Anyway, long story short, I got the job. So moving to Future Cruises went out the window because I was like, well, I'm going to go on Virgin Voyages now with the shops. And then I started on Virgin Voyages and I did briefly get made assistant manager or put onto the training in 2020 and then we obviously all got sent home because of covid and i came back and just said to my manager i was like i don't want to be assistant manager please don't make me assistant manager and he was like okay normally people are asking me the opposite i was like i don't want it i, I do not want it like i'm i i just i'm very much a person that goes with my gut feeling I'm very good at listening to my intuition because I practiced and it just didn't feel right. So I'm like, 
it's not the right thing. And you know what? It wasn't the right thing because me not becoming assistant manager meant that I could put all of my effort into creating this YouTube channel, which I am far more passionate about than I would ever be about being a, an assistant manager. And I'm not shitting on that job. Like, it's a hard job, you know, it, 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 and it's a good job. So if you want to do it, do it. But it just wasn't what I wanted to do. So to answer that question in a very roundabout way, no, I have no intentions of progressing through the company because I am putting all of my effort into YouTube and I just can't. Now, if for some reason in a few years I decide that cruising as crew is not what I want to do anymore, then maybe I will decide to put all of my efforts into becoming like a hotel general manager or a retail assistant manager. But for now, it's just not what I want to do. What was it like working for P&O and how do you compare it to Virgin? But P&O is a just, just a different company altogether. Like they're very English, very much traditional cruising. They cater for the more mature audience. Virgin are completely the opposite. You know, it's casual. There's no formal nights. It's mostly younger people who come on the Virgin cruises. Well, you know what? I'm gonna say, I'm not even gonna say younger. It's younger at heart. Like, there's a lot of, like, 50, 60-year-olds that come on board. I mean, that isn't old, but you know what I mean. It's older than 25. But they are so... They're just young at heart. So I, that's what Virgin attracts. People who still have a lust for adventure. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but they're just very, very different. In terms of my experience on them both, I really couldn't say one was better than the other because I had the best time on both of them. Like, I had some pretty hard times on both of them like you know this last contract on Valiant there was you know there was some really difficult periods in that contract where and the same with Oceana like it wasn't all incredible like there was some really difficult stuff that went on but that's life <laughs> whether I'm on a cruise ship or whether I'm at home there's gonna be shit that happens who is your best friend that you've met on cruise ships and who do you stay in contact with the most I really can't say like there's I would say I have 15 like incredible friends from my cruise ship time, which I know sounds like a lot. It is a lot, but I have been on cruise ships for eight years. So, you know, um, who do I speak to the most? Hannah, who I went on RV with because she lives down the road. So we do see each other a lot. We talk a lot because it's just easy because, you know, we are, we live in the same town, whereas all my other friends, if, you know, some of them live in England, but some of them live on the other side of the world. So there's a different time difference. So there's a time difference and it's just not as easy. However, we do stay in contact and we are really good friends. So I'm not going to say who my like best friend is that I've met on ships because I honestly love them all equally but I, I stay in contact with Hannah the most because she's just closer geographically. <laughs> Do you have an OnlyFans? Okay now the reason I'm even gonna acknowledge this question is because I have been asked it quite a lot over the past few months. Do you have an OnlyFans? Can you start an OnlyFans? Now it's lovely um, to feel attractive <laughs> but no I don't have one. I'm not thinking of starting one. I mean, never say never, but probably never. Um, showing a bit of cleavage in a video is as, as much as you, you're gonna see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, uh, no shade if, you know, if you have an OnlyFans, get your money, like, do it, it's wonderful. It's not my first choice of side hustle. Um, but thanks for asking, but the answer's no. What countries do you want to visit that you haven't yet visited? I'm going to show you this actually. So I'm filming, I mean, as you can see by my bed, I'm filming this video in my bedroom. This is my magnet wall that I'm always telling you about. These are all my magnets. So as you can see, I have been to a lot of places. And honestly, I love that magnet board so much. Norway like Scandinavia that's where I haven't been to that part of the world I would love to go Virgin I don't think Virgin's gonna have a cruise ship that does that anytime soon 
So I think I'm probably gonna end up going on a cruise as a passenger for a nice holiday and to see Scandinavia because um, it's very expensive. So I think to travel around that region on land would cost an absolute bomb. So I actually think doing a Scandinavian cruise is probably the cheapest way to do it. And also a really nice way to see it because you get to go through the fjords and stuff like that. Would really, 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 really love to do that. So maybe this year, maybe, maybe when I'm back on my next vacation, I'll treat myself to a little holiday on a Norwegian cruise. Honestly, if I was gonna say collect anything, collect magnets, it's because you can do something like that. And I had a roommate once who collected salt and pepper shakers, a roommate that collected teddy bears, a roommate that collected um, shot glasses, all of this. But the problem with those things is they're clutter. And there's like not really a great way to display them that doesn't look messy. Whereas this, I mean, you might think it's hideous, I think it's incredible. <laughs> but, but like this isn't clutter, it almost could pass for a piece of artwork. So magnets are definitely the way forward, in my opinion. And also if you are going on a cruise ship and you're like, yes, I'm gonna collect magnets. <sighs> Went through a stage where I got a magnet from every town and then I was like, this is getting a bit expensive. And then I was like, I'm just gonna get the magnet for the country. I really wish I'd have just spent the the two dollars in every port and got a magnet in every single town because you forget where you've been. So like for Australia, I've got Darwin, I've got Cairns, I've got Airlie Beach, I've got Sydney, and then for Thailand, I've just got Thailand. I haven't got like Chiang Mai or Koh Tao or anything like that, I've just got Thailand. And I really wish I'd have either just got a magnet from the country or I'd, or I'd gone full throttle and got a magnet from every town or every port that I visited. So that is my recommendation to you. Don't get postcards either. Postcards, they're a great idea at the time, unless you're actually gonna send them home to your family and friends. But in terms of collecting postcards to display, how are you really gonna display postcards? Anyway, those are all the questions that you guys asked. So I'm, I hope that gives you a little bit more insight to me and what my plans are and yeah, all of that. If you do have any questions, you know what to do. Leave them in the comments. Do not ask me on Instagram because there is already too many and I can't answer them all. It is stressing me out. But yeah, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.